This week we're showing you how to make music videos, from the first step of coming up with an idea, all the way through to adding the final touches in post-production. Hello, my name is Simon Cade, and this is DSLR Guide. So over the summer I shot a music video with my friend Alicia Catling, and I want to now use that as an example to take you through the process of making a music video, but I do recommend that you watch the video itself first, and that will really help this video to make a lot more sense. So the first step is to listen to the song. Now we thought that Alicia's song sounded a bit psychedelic, but it also had these kind of mournful undertones to it. So the image that popped into my head when I was listening to it was of a bed in an empty field. And we then constructed a simple story around that idea of a bed in a field. Now I am going to spoil the whole music video, so if you haven't seen it, now is a good time to see it. But basically what happens in the video is the initial story is about someone who's planting a seed, only to find that the flower then withers. So the story outside of that is that it takes place within the dreams of a coma patient. And at the end we see her lie down in the dream, and the final shot shows her heart rate reducing to a flat line. So you've probably heard of the idea that filmmakers have these metaphorical tools that they can use to convey ideas and emotions. So for example, when I was planning the shoot, I decided that I wanted to have soft lighting and very minimal camera movement, which would kind of reflect that stillness of someone being in a coma. And I also decided to use plenty of wide shots to represent her loneliness. And then to show that it was a dream, I first had the kind of unlikely image of a bed in a field, but then I also wanted to make it a bit more clear, so I thought I would do some kind of abstract overlays. So these are things that pop up on the screen and are like semi-transparent that don't really make sense but help to show that it's, you know, not just a normal thing that they're in a dream world. So by making these decisions early on, it makes it a lot easier to have kind of consistency throughout your tools. So the idea is that even if someone didn't understand the story, they would still pick up the right vibe and the right emotions. So it's up to you to use the storytelling devices of colour, lighting, framing, camera movement and all the other ones, depending on what kind of vibe and what kind of emotions and ideas you want to convey. So the next step is to storyboard the video. Now I used a pen tablet and the free software GIMP to kind of roughly sketch out each of the shots and I was thinking about things like where the camera is going to be placed in terms of the height of it and then also the framing and I was also thinking about things like screen direction so if you don't know what the 180 degree rule is then you should definitely google that and then decide whether you want to follow it or purposefully break it so I then brought the images from my storyboard into my editing software along with the song and then I could edit those shots along to the music video and get a very good idea about what kind of pacing I wanted, how quick the cuts would come and you know make sure that I knew exactly how long each shot needed to be. So the key here is that if you don't make these kind of decisions before the shoot then you'll find yourself making them when you're actually on set and as much as possible you just want to be focusing on getting the shots and it makes it so much easier when you can have that time beforehand to really sit down and think about these really important things such as you know what kind of shots you're going to get. So as we built a very detailed plan we started to look into locations so I went down to one of the local kind of wildlife park sort of things and I spoke to the people in the office and they were very happy to let us film there but they did also tell us that the park is very busy after 11 a.m and since we wanted it to be deserted, we decided that we'd then arrive at 7am. So it was very worthwhile to talk to them, not only to get permission, but also to get some kind of inside information about it. So on the day of the main shoot, I got up at 5am with the plan that we could be at the location and fully set up by 8am. So I'm really glad that we left that time because it turned out that carrying all of the gear and all of the props, in, especially the bed, was a real hassle and it took a long time. So I was very glad that we had set aside time for that. So in terms of equipment, I was shooting with the Canon T3i along with a Tamron 17-50mm f2.8 VC lens and I also brought plenty of reflectors and stands for those reflectors and also of course props and costumes and food and drink. But I'll do a full list of all the equipment I used on the blog post so do check that out if you're interested. So once we'd built the bed, I positioned it thinking about the background that was behind it and the angle of the camera but also thinking about the lighting. So those are two things to consider when you're setting up your set, I suppose. So I shot pretty much completely with natural light and because I wanted that really soft lighting kind of look, I decided that we would be waiting until the clouds came over. So 
we were very fortunate in that it was a cloudy day, but they were kind of going in and out all the time. So we we're pretty much just looking at the sky, trying to guess when the next bit of cloud cover was going to come. Now, we thought a lot about the order of shooting things. So for instance, because one of the priorities was having a empty field that didn't have any trace of civilization, we decided to do all the wide shots first, because then even if people arrived later on, we could still do the tighter shots, the close-ups later on, even if there's people in the background a bit. So for the shots that needed lip syncing along with the song, we just brought a small portable speaker which could plug into a phone, and then I'd also asked her if she had practiced lip syncing along with it for a couple of days beforehand, because that way it saves a lot of time on set because she could pretty much nail it in one take. So once we'd got all the shots that we needed, we packed down and I quickly rushed home so I could copy the footage and get it backed up as soon as possible. Now the other two shoots were a lot simpler they pretty much didn't require much equipment or they, they were very short shoots. So we just kind of turned up and got those out of the way, ticked off the shots and it was very easy. But the interesting part was filming those kind of inserts, the overlays. So I bought some flowers for the shoot and I let them wilt for a couple of weeks and then I went out and filmed the overlays. So because I knew that I was going to overlay it, I just had to consider where I was placing the flowers within the frame so they didn't cover up anything important. But I also wanted some shots with a kind of watery theme to them. So I set up a light behind a diffusion panel and then I set up a glass of water in front of it and I basically just filmed that glass of water. So I would, you know, pour water into a cup and see what that looked like. Had some cool little bubbles that worked quite well when I then overlaid them. And then I also stirred the water with a pen and then dropped some food colouring into it. And that also made quite a cool pattern, which I ended up using quite a lot in the video, including in the credits at the end of the video. So I think it's definitely worth trying out some stuff with water and ink. You can get some really cool effects. Now sometimes a little bit of resourcefulness goes a long way. So if you look at this shot that I had of a hospital heart rate monitor, you see that, and hopefully it should look fairly believable, but if I zoom out, then you can see that it's just a computer monitor on a stool with some curtains clamped up to the regular curtains that were there in my bedroom. And I'd set up my camera on a skateboard dolly that I'd made ages ago. So hopefully no one noticed that it wasn't an actual hospital room. And as for the graphics that were shown on the screen, I had to make those from scratch too. So I made some kind of elements that were just images in GIMP, and then I animated them in Motion 5 and made a kind of looping video which I could then play on that old computer monitor. And I think it worked out pretty well in the end, although it did take a long time to set up. So once you've filmed everything, it's time to start post-production. So the first step is to start bringing your clips into your timeline. So I was generally following my storyboard, but I was also very open to new ideas. And I'm going to do a whole episode about editing, but for now I'll just say that editing is basically the case of organising your shots in terms of the order, but also the speed of your cuts. You know, how fast is the story going to unfold? How many cuts are you using? Do you want it to play out really slow? Or do you want it to be, you know, really fast paced? So at our location there were lots of benches around, which kind of defeated the whole idea of it being a deserted field. So what I did is I would just make a, in layman's terms, I basically took another bit of forest and made a little patch out of that by duplicating the clip and, you know, drawing around it and made the little patch and put it on top of the bench. And, you know, that was a fairly simple thing to do, but it did take a while since I need to do it so often. So once the editing's finished and you've done any visual effects that you might need to do, then you can do color correction. It does make sense to do it in this order so that you're not color correcting loads of shots that you're not even going to use in the end. But the thing I did in general was just try and match the shots as closely as possible which did take a little bit of work considering that the lighting was changing. And then I also kind of went for an overall idea of it starting off warm and then getting cooler as it went down because there's a kind of simple association with warm being happy color and cooler bluer colors being sad. So that's very basic, but you know, these sort of things do work. So I would say just think about your colors, try and match it if you, if you need to. Now, as I said, we wanted it to have these kind of abstract overlays, the idea being that would show that it was a dream. So I took the footage that I'd shot with the water glass and the flowers, and I did a variety of blending modes by putting them on top and changing the blending mode to maybe screen or add. And the idea with these, they're very simple kind of mathematical things that make the black parts of the image transparent and the white bits sh show through or the brighter bits show through. Or in the other way, you can have the dark bits show through and the brighter bits not show through. So that's pretty much it. So hopefully seeing how we made our music video, that will help you to make some decisions about how you want to make yours. But of course, you don't have to follow what we did at all 
you know, especially with music videos, you especially open to be able to just do whatever you want and be as abstract or cinematic or just generally crazy as you want. But all that remains is for me to remind you that you can see the finished full music video and the first link in the description. And also if you wanna check out Alicia's music stuff, she's over on YouTube, Facebook, and SoundCloud. All of those just slash Alicia Catling. So hope this has been a useful video and I'll see you next time. Thank mm -hmm. you.